Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to PWD Allies podcast. The show is being brought to you, brought to you by Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. That's where I am right now, and that's where my journey began on, uh, well, earlier uh, this month. And it started in Victoria and uh, way to Vancouver, British Columbia, and out to Toronto, Ontario. So, uh, you know, like once again, my name is Brent Frayne. I'm the host of the show. And uh, this is where the host uh, began the journey with Sonia and myself. And we started uh, early on in the early morning hours uh, and we left Victoria. So uh, let's uh, start the show off with the uh, memory lane. So we started from Victoria. BC. Well, well, let's, sorry, sorry, sure. uh, Brent. Let's back up the train and let's say that we're we're going to be starting in Victoria and we're, we're going to be going all the way to Toronto. For the, for those that haven't seen your train videos, yes, yes. What, what are you doing? You have to go back and watch the train videos, but we're yeah. giving context. So, so for, for those that don't don't know or haven't watched them yet, that's what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about going from Victoria, BC, all the way from Vancouver to Toronto and then back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so go. Yeah, I uh, really encourage uh, people to tune into uh, our train adventures uh, through uh, Via Rail Canada, uh, which started in Vancouver, British Columbia. But first, we started uh, on our journey from Victoria. uh, And people that are not familiar where Victoria, B.C. is, it's on the most southern part of Vancouver Island, uh, on Vancouver Island in Victoria here. So in order to get to Vancouver, we have to take a transit bus. And now it depends on the time of the day. If you're leaving early in the morning, uh, there is no transit to take us from where we are to downtown uh, Victoria, where you can catch a transit bus to take you to the BC ferries. And then you got to take BC ferries over to Vancouver and then another bus and then another train in order to take us to downtown. So it's yeah. uh, it's definitely... Um, a just to get off the island. It's just to get off the island. It's, 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 you know, it's like, you know... Welcome to the Hotel California. California. You can never leave. (laughs) You can never leave. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It reminds you of Gilligan's Island, right? Yeah, that's right. right, eh? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a beautiful place, um, but transit-wise, accessibility-wise, and now that's where it gets into kind of grading where uh, Victoria is not part of the, uh, you know, the Metro Vancouver uh, for the transit wise, uh, it's, uh, it's actually brought to you by a BC Transit. Uh, so uh, in order to get from there, uh, you get into Metro Vancouver and then you take the rapid transit. Uh, so different modes of transportation to get down to the Pacific National um, Center there. Uh, so you take the VR rail and that's where we started. Uh, we got down there and uh, got checked in uh, with via rail um, with your luggage and they got to know what you're bringing on and how much luggage, et cetera. And they scan your barcode and know who you are, where you're going to be situated. And so our journey began um, getting on there. Uh, and it was, it was a great journey uh, just for people following along. I really, like I said, at the beginning of the podcast, I really encourage you to check out our uh, journey. Um, because it actually tells more of the story. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview of the story, but I really want you to check out our journey. That way it kind of corresponds with what I'm saying now. So the journey was a very memorable uh, journey. Um, I really uh, enjoyed doing that uh, segment. Uh, It was fun. Uh, It was fun at the same time because uh, being able to get around on the train, you're not just sitting in one spot. You're able to move around on the train accessible wise yeah, you just have to keep your balance because the train does move around. Yeah. Um, you know, but having um, like a, a cafe car close by where we were, uh, the mm-hmm. seats reclined back. You could actually put your feet up on a, on a leg rest and you've got your charging stations, you're charging up your cell phone or your music. If you're listening to it. Uh, mm-hmm. Bring it back. And here's a helpful hint, though, which I didn't really emphasize on the uh, segment is bring battery backup. So if you've got battery banks, Please bring mm-hmm. them along with you. If you ever want to take the train trip, you won't be sorry if you did. Invest in it. Uh, you know, yeah. you can, maybe 20 bucks. Uh, I mean, you can get a set of a set, a set of them. I mean, you don't have to be fancy. Uh, plug in it your... Could, 
Because you always say that the only plugins they usually have on the train is in the bathrooms. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, yeah, like they're yeah. hard to find. Uh, where yeah. we were, like we had them right in our seats, so you could mm -hmm. uh, plug uh, your your uh, your bet your battery backup into the back of the seats. They have uh, two plugins right there, mm -hmm. uh, and they have a they, and uh, that's in coach seating, right? So mm -hmm. I want to emphasize in coach seating, you have them in the back of your seats. They have a table that comes down too. So as as another bonus. And leg rest, the seat goes back, bring a pillow with you, okay? Because you can buy them on the train, but... Well, and, and we had, a, we had a, uh, a comment on one of your last videos, hmm. uh, on the train video, and somebody, somebody said, well, what's the, what's the cost? And, and, and you um, clarified with me before mm -hmm. I commented back to the person that, that when you have coach seating the the food is mm -hmm. extra you have to pay for all the food right so that's yeah. the, that's the only thing for coach sitting you have to pay for all the food yeah. but then it, but then if you get a private room mm -hmm. the the food is included with the ticket yeah so I, I will explain that for just so that people that are listening and following along with the journey uh, maybe they're considering and wanting to take the journey uh from vancouver to other parts of canada um Basically, the final destination on the Canadian train is from Vancouver to Toronto. It does go uh, further east from there and other points um, north uh, from Manitoba and from Ontario and, and eastward from uh, Toronto, Ontario. But with the uh, aspect of uh, basically buying food, uh, so coach seating, you have access to the uh, cafe car. You do not, and I'll, I'll emphasize, you do not have access to the dining car when you're in coach seating. Mm -hmm. uh, it's strictly enforced. Uh, they know who their passengers are in each car, and they, they call them cars of where you're situated. So if there's two or three cars that are for coach seating, they know uh, the attendant knows who their uh, who their passengers are in that car. So, 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 do, so do they taser all the passengers that are trying to get to the dining car? Oh, we, we witnessed, uh, we witnessed uh, a few, uh, <laughs> we witnessed a few, um, it, uh, maybe it, a lightsaber. Yeah. It's like, whoa. <laughs> As Brent's waving his hand with a lightsaber. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like a taser. <laughs> uh, we, we witnessed a few, um, not really altercations, but people being escorted back to their uh, okay. cars uh, and saying, well, hang on. I know you need to be along in, uh, in this corridor. Oh, I was just curious to see what coach seating looked like. Yeah. Well, and uh, then they were, then they were wearing ankle bracelets afterwards. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, mm. for for ourselves, um, like I'll, I'll kind of explain about the coach seating um, as we uh, go through our journey because uh, it's quite uh, entertaining on that for sure. Because we were we were kind of curious, well, what is coach seating like? Because we had accommodation on our way out. Um, the reason why um, is because we got it as a reduced cost, um, and for us, it didn't cost us anything. But I was told that uh, to get the most value uh, at the time. And so I did, uh, and they covered the food costs. But again, like coach seating, we'll get back to the coach seating part and then we'll, I'll streamline into the, uh, on the journey into the difference between um, the uh, accommodation uh, part. So the, uh, the coach seating is, yeah, you buy your stuff in the cafe car. Um, lived experience, uh, I mean, it's trial by error, right? When you're traveling, I mean, you don't always know, well, what, maybe I should have brought this or should have done that. So I, I would recommend to people doing the coach seating, um, bring um, like some hot oatmeal with you. Like you can have access to um, the hot, they have a um, you know, hot water uh, little valve that you can fill up your, your bowl, uh, you know, like I'll say a, a plastic bowl, or mm -hmm. if you, you know, if you want to recycle it, I mean, I encourage to recycle, but I mean, reusable ones, right? Anyway, so you can fill it up or a hot, um, a hot cup. Bring your, say, a hot coffee, like a, uh, you know, like a container of hot coffee. Uh, I mean, not hot coffee, but instant coffee. Pour it in yeah. there, and and they got cream and stuff on there. So sure, I mean, why not just and, mm -hmm. <laughs> do it that way? Save some money because they yeah. they're gonna nail you. Like uh, I mean, three dollars and fifty cents for uh, for a cup of coffee. Um, mm -hmm. They um, encourage customers to keep that cup, rinse it out. You can use it throughout the day. They have no problem with that. They'll charge you two dollars for a refill so uh, you don't want to do it that way because otherwise it'll add up now buying stuff out of the cafe car 
you can get some really good meals. I mean, I, I was amazed. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe Sonia, maybe uh, you can mention what was your favorite, um, you know, like some of the meals in the cafe cart. Uh, <clears throat> scrambled eggs, potatoes. That's good. Scrambled eggs and potatoes. It was very tasty. Like, I like hash browns? Hash browns, yeah. 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 It was kind of, it was like a, a, an omelet. Like it was, it was mm -hmm. really, it was really tasty. Um, people, and the, and the oh, um, let's say, uh, beef. Um, it was like a beef stroganoff kind of a, mm -hmm. a dish that was uh, in there and with some veggies. So you got mm -hmm. your veggies in there. It was actually very tasty. Uh, amazing enough. Like some people think, well, it's microwave food, right? thrown in there and uh the, the, the price the only drawback was the, the price was kind of up there a little bit for what you would get so thirty dollars thirty dollars for two people or i mean you look at like a hot entree like it was like you know like twelve fifty, right so i mean that would add up very fast so you would want it i would look at the menu and i would find something that would be uh filling that would fill you up yeah and would hold you over i found that hot oatmeal was the best thing for me in the morning and it held me over so I just have something very late for lunch, and and that's why you said like if you if you compared the price of going from the uh, coach to a roomette, which is oh, the yeah. cheapest, which is the cheap cheapest private room, mm -hmm. uh, is sometimes um, more like a better way to go because all your food is included. Then yeah, economically it is uh, it would work out really well for a passenger to do it that way um, because. You start adding up these little things. I mean, it doesn't seem like much at first. Uh, amazing enough, we actually did quite well uh, on our journey because uh, very um, self-conscious on um, getting the most uh, value for your dollar. Uh, you know, being uh, being uh, uh, you know legislated into poverty in Canada is not a not a great thing. So, um, being fortunate enough to do the Via Rail trip and yeah um, and. Just saving up the dollars. Somebody asked me what I where I went for my summer break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Newsflash. <laughs> yeah, so like I mean, so like you know, we saved up like GSTs and stuff, and uh, birthday money and Christmas money, and we still like you know keep that money aside. So when we do want to do another journeys, like short journeys, um, then we can kind of add to that. And so we that's what we did. Because people say, well, how, you know, the question I always get was, well, how can you afford that? I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're in legislative poverty in Canada because governments don't care. One of my neighbors says, because governments don't care about PWD. I go, well, newsflash, we all get disabilities in our lives. Um, I guess we don't care about seniors either. I mean, I'm going to, that will get on a whole rant of another conversation yeah. on another show, but. We could, um, we could, uh bundle in like five or six podcasts and oh yeah one, one episode. That, that, that's a heavy duty topic and you know <laughs> i really encourage people that want to talk about lived experience stories to come on for a show with so like when i when i say get the most value for your dollar like that's basically what we got like we really stretched far we actually took um a bag a heavy bag this time around we we actually reduced it down and i i said to sonia there's no way we're gonna take that heavy bag I was carrying this heavy bag. It was like, you're allowed to bring a certain amount of uh, carry-ons with you on the via rail. They're very picky. They changed their bag bagging policy, which I totally understand because they don't want people bringing like, tons and tons of bags on with you, right? Mm -hmm. So you can bring on uh, you know, a personal item, a, uh, a carry-on bag. You can bring a check bag uh, per passenger. And so uh, like a personal item is, well, if she's bringing a purse on, well, I mean, that's not even a personal item. That's just who you are and that's part of it so yeah. she was able to get a purse and throw it into a carry a little carry bag so now she's got that plus that mm -hmm. and then she was able to bring another like a, a like a carry-on bag like personal item plus a carry bag and a checked item is checked item so here's a i want to clarify something with people is that when i say checked item that checked item you have to be really careful you can bring it on with you but if you want it as a checked item and it's like it's not too heavy because they weigh it but if you want to bring it on with you, now you're accountable for that. You need to put it where you want to put it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can store it in a safe spot, because if it's checked, the, you have no you have no access to that bag until you get to your final destination. Mm -hmm. So be really careful when you're bringing a checked item on with you on the VR rail, because we've almost found out that the hard way. Uh, I said, uh, okay, so you got checked items, a suitcase? Uh, yeah. Okay, did you want to uh, <coughs> put that into another storage room? I said, well, we just want to explore around, and I want to film the beginning of our segment 
and uh, right in front of the train station. So people that were following along with the video, when you saw that segment of a picture of the building, I didn't have my suitcase with me. Sonia was hanging on to it inside the building because if we would have put it in check um, luggage, we would not have had access to that until we got to Toronto. Uh, so we had to be careful. So she goes, well, you go out and film it. I Okay. So I went out and filmed this. This is where our journey begins, right? And then I booted back inside. And so we had access. We threw so, it out. So the like, things that Sonia does behind the scenes, eh? The things Sonia does <laughs> behind the scenes is very grateful. And I appreciate all her um, all her filming that she does, too, with our segments. And and I and I do a lot of the filming, too. But she watches a lot of our luggage, too, while I'm doing some of the filming, too. Uh, so I'm really grateful on that. And, and she's keeping track of where our luggage is. And so we hauled all of our luggage in uh, via Rail Canada. Uh, thank you. I want to thank you. Um, for your your hospitality and um, for helping us with our luggage too. Um, some of it was a little bit heavy, um, especially the bags that we're trying to carry. A uh, carry-on bag of snacks and drinks and beverages that kept the cost down hugely. And they encouraged me to bring it on. This time around, we didn't load it down as heavy because they left a little welt on my shoulder. And oh right. man, I didn't realize. I'm like, why is my shoulder hurting? I look at like, oh, big, big, like a red mark right there. I'm going, oh, oh man. stung. Hey, yeah, yeah. I yeah. dug right in. And we, so our we journey. Have, sorry, I, I just wanted yeah. to break in a little bit. We have Lisa in chat. She's she's uh, had the question up for. Well, I don't know if it's a question actually. I just wanted to. Mm -hmm. Uh, if she's still there, I, um, she her comment was York region, uh, and then she's got in brackets or uh, is uh, mobility on request is fantastic. Um, so I'm assuming she's talking about the service in York region in called Ontario. called mobility on request, and then she says uh, you can compare to wheel trans. Now I don't know what either of those things are, so. Lisa, if you're still in uh, chat, maybe you can clarify what 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 the mobility on request is and the wheel trans is. Like, if if there are services that are available for people in in like the Toronto area or whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be great, Lisa. If you could clarify it, I mean, I'll I'll tell you. I mean, on on my knowledge, and I could be wrong, and people could correct me on that because uh, I'm only going with my knowledge based on. Uh, in BC and from what I hear in Ontario when I when we did make our way out there uh, that uh, when I get to that part of the journey but in the meantime Lisa if you are online um, if you could clarify on that that would be awesome uh, just so our other uh, listeners and viewers um, could uh, could maybe chime in on that too and talk about their lived experience with that that'd be great mm -hmm. so I guess I covered the part where um, comes down to the difference on coach seating um, would I do coach seating again? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I just know how to prepare for it. I mean, it, it gets a little, uh, I shouldn't say really uncomfortable. It's just positioning yourself in the seat, uh, making sure you bring some comfy stuff with you. Um, and you're able to move around, uh, when I say I am comfy, cause it's like the armrest, it's like half an armrest. That's where you're trying to put your arm down, but it's only half of an armrest. So yeah, it does get a little bit uncomfy. Uh, we could have had a four-seater. They were going to give us a four-seater um, seat at first. And I thought, wow, like complimentary, no problem. But here's the catch, though. They didn't have the tables that came down in front of you. Oh. So they didn't have those in front of you. Now, looking back at it, I said to Sonia, was it a really a big deal? Maybe we could have just taken them anyway because we did use the tables, but not as much as we thought. They did have the plugins. But imagine having two seats in front of you where you could put all your stuff in and you're just sitting here. You have nothing else around you, but, you know, you could really utilize those because you could actually maybe put your flags all the way out and then, yeah, or lay down. You could actually lay down in each, each area, right? So yeah. there's pros and cons to it, um, but you take what they actually assign you. Um, and we were, we were fortunate. We were able to pick which seats were you know, kind of good for us overall. You've got overhead luggage where you can put your stuff overhead. You got a luggage rack, uh, first come, first serve. We had access to that stuff. Uh, you can put stuff under your seats. Mm -hmm. um, washrooms on board. Um, yeah, you, you can go and use your washrooms and water bottles. You can fill up your water bottles. So I encourage people to, uh, you can fill up your water um, bottles there. And 
they got water stations and they replenish it. It's actually okay water to drink. That is safe to drink because they replenish it. They have all their uh, filling stations when they service the train at stops. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have access to showers, unfortunately, in coach seating. So that kind of sucks. But that's just the way it goes. Um, some people try to go into a combination area. Um, Teaser. <laughs> yeah, I, I advise you probably not a good idea to do that because the attendants actually do watch for that. Um, we actually did witness that. And, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I even said to one of the attendants, "Hey, I go, so and so is down there." Yeah, I know, I know. Whatever. They just let it go. But yeah, I mean, when you're in a corridor, please respect that your assigned area because Mm -hmm. it's for your safety and for other customer safety. Um, Not, not just like passenger safety. I mean, that is important too, obviously, but it's for, um, for protocol. uh, And I found this out from via rail because that's what I'm going to lean into now the, uh, the sleeper accommodation part where they want to keep track of who's in what corridor just for safety reasons. Uh, And, you know, just so they can, uh, they can say like, <clears throat> we've got uh, we've got uh, 150 people in coach seating. Okay, yeah. so why is there only 142 people? Where are the other eight people? Yeah, and it, it makes sense too when you think yeah. about building building codes. Like, yeah, a lot of the public buildings that you go in, like even at my church, they'll have like on, they'll have a plaque on the wall that says <laughs> uh, maximum capacity is uh, say like 450 people or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know and and I, like i'm sure like anything like a train is the same thing it is like per mm-hmm. car yep. per car has got to have a maximum capacity thing so they gotta they gotta be able to like keep track of all that right i'm sure yeah and that's what they explained to me too it's a balance of uh, knowing how many passengers are in the, each uh, component because they when they scan your your ticket they know where you are supposed to be at at any particular time right so if you're on a um at a stop where yeah we've got like say uh 45 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it is yeah that's fine you go onto the platform you go where they tell you that you can go as far as you can go uh just be back near the train and when you get back to the train and if you're closer to another compartment uh say it's coach seating uh and you're supposed to be in accommodation which is many cars down and you've got to walk all the way down I, uh, you know, and if there's a cart there and you can't do that, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll give you a ride in that little cart. They have little golf carts and they can give you a ride all the way down to this golf cart, all the way down okay. to your, uh, your corridor if you need to. If yeah. you don't need that, they will help you up onto the train. They have a little uh, pedestal where you can climb onto and they got bars. If mm-hmm. you, you, you grab onto them, they'll yeah. stand behind you and actually help you up the stairs. There, okay. there are stairs there. Yeah. Uh, so for mobility wise, that they're awesome. Like they will help you, and they'll make sure you get on. So how about how about a uh, a wheelchair or a scooter then? Do they have a uh, ramp they, that comes down, or they they do have uh, they do have ramps for that. Like they mm-hmm. they actually will get you onto there. Um, yeah, they have all their uh, set up for that. I haven't witnessed that, but they told me they have everything all set for. I that. mean, I saw that. I saw the yellow stool on one yeah. of the, on the on the uh, video there. Yeah. And in some places, um, if the ground is uneven, yeah, that could be interesting. And there was one stop that we stopped at and I was, oh, I'm going to get off. And they're like, one one attendant said, okay, just be really careful because the ground is a little uneven. Are you sure you want to get up? And I went, oh, I said, oh, it looks like it's raining out pretty good. She goes, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you don't want to, you don't have to. I go, nah. I go, you know what? I got off and it was just, it was coming down. The rain was coming down. I'm like, Okay, some fresh air. Okay, I'm going back in now. So she yeah. says, be careful. So I grabbed on the bar. She stood behind me. Sonia was still inside. I just grabbed on the bar. She, she stood behind me and just kind of gave me a little push up that way. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you don't fall back, right? Um, the one attendant actually did take a little tumble herself. She lost oh, balance. Wow. Yeah, she yeah. actually lost balance. So she was, again, um, just reminding people, they just be really careful. And she's mm-hmm. there. I mean, they're they're there to help you. And so we got on the one stop and we walked through um, coach seating because they said, uh, all aboard and you have to get on. And as soon as they make that announcement, so whatever car that you are, a car that you're closest to, get on. And yeah. so we got on and that's how we got to check out coach seating. And a attendant was sitting there. Hello. And I'm like, hi. He goes, oh, you're on your, uh, you're on your way uh, to, yeah. it was actually uh, our accommodation that we had at first. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, that's right. He goes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I know. I know where you guys are situated. Well, I don't didn't even know who that person was. That's what I'm saying. They know 
that you're yeah. not in their compartment. So, yeah. <laughs> and I said, oh, cool. So we get to see what coach seating's like. Yeah, cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Knock yourself out, he said. I'm like, what? Well, I mean, not literally, he said, but mm-hmm. so we wandered through. Okay, interesting. So this is what we're up against on our way back. I wonder yeah. if, I wonder if, because uh, I know we were going to do a short show today, Brent. So yeah. uh, we, it's, it's uh, we've got about uh, maybe a little over 10 minutes left. So I was wondering if you wanted to switch gears a little bit and, and talk about, yeah. do the compare contrast between Vancouver and Toronto, like what's your what's your experience if you're if you're going to compare uh, Vancouver Transit accessible transit to Toronto mm-hmm. all, all the way east? Like, what's the difference of going from coast to coast? Uh, if we want to spend the last ten minutes to get kind of talking about that, yeah, I will uh, streamline really quickly into into that. Um, what I'll do is uh, just for people that are following along, you know, and I left off on coach, oh, yeah. like the like the accommodation part um basically it's it's really worth it it's like you get all your you get you get all your food included um and like kind of all the above that i've mentioned in coach seating but you get all your stuff inclusive how you calculate that is and then i'll talk get into about the differences on the transit uh vancouver versus toronto is uh you look at your, your coach seating price okay if you can get it uh, for a value price that works good for your budget um great go for it you add up the cost of what it would probably in general uh, cost you in food um, per day. So like, again, you leverage out maybe say 20 bucks, $15, maybe for your breakfast, maybe a little bit less uh, lunch. Just like $15 average, each. $15 yeah. Yeah. Each, yeah. each person. Yeah. So you yeah. average it out overall per day. And then you add up on the top of your coach versus your food. And if you can get your price for your, um, your um, sleeper accommodation, um, the cheapest, option because it doesn't matter which option that you choose you're still going to have access to the same accommodations that everybody else does in sleeper accommodation the only difference is the sides of the rooms are bigger and you're paying bigger price we had an option of looking at that uh, but it wasn't the financial option was not there because they're like no way like there i don't i mean did i win the lottery or something to afford that like you know, so we, we said, no, like we couldn't do our um, accommodation on the way back. So we had to do coach seating and that was fine. So the difference now is the transit. When we left, um, you know, Metro Vancouver in Vancouver, uh, BC, um, the transit to get around, I mean, wow, like compared to Victoria, uh, I mean, it's daytime, nighttime, right? I mean, you can get around like, wow, okay, I can get from point A to point B, no problem. And we knew how to navigate because I grew up out that way. <laughs> and so does Sonia. Mm-hmm. Um, so we knew how to navigate the system really well. And so when we got to Toronto, Ontario, uh, the GTA, um, we explored different areas um, on that. And um, if we run out of time on today's podcast, I will continue on the segment on the difference, but I will try to really streamline it. Is the uh, So the difference on between Vancouver and Toronto Oh man, the, the, the difference on the transportation, it's just amazing. Uh, we got to Toronto, uh, go trains everywhere, go trains, go trains. Um, and they're like the West Coast Express. If people are familiar with the, uh, British Columbia, uh, Metro Vancouver, they're going to say, oh yeah, West Coast Express, yeah, the commuter train, all right, yeah, that leaves uh, Mission, uh, British Columbia in the morning, early hours, and yeah. it parks. And that's the, like one train. One train. Versus... Uh, uh, well, actually, All I think, the I think they have four, they four have trains. In... They have four trains that leave out of Mission, though. But yeah, they all okay. go from okay. um, they all go from east to west, and they mm-hmm. park in Vancouver for the day, drop off the commuters for the day, and then they start going at after three o'clock in the afternoon. They then they go in increments back to Mission again, which mm-hmm. is about an hour and ten or hour and twenty minute ride on the actual train. It's somewhere around there, hour and ten, hour and twenty minutes. I don't know exactly, but I've taken it um, many years ago. I enjoyed it. I uh, because it remind me of the Via Rail. Like it's a, a, the train, right? It's mm-hmm. the uh, the journey of taking that train. But imagine taking that same kind of train for a long distance from tr- from Vancouver to Toronto. Mm-hmm. Same kind of deal, folks. Mm-hmm. But it, it, the comfort is there. Uh, so when we got to explore the Go Train, uh, it ran all the time, and I was like, "Well, this is great. You can actually get to and from the community. Um, you don't have to be trapped in." one community and not be able to get back until like during the day, like you can go throughout the day. Um, do I think that accessibility wise that they could improve on the go train? Absolutely. 
Um, there were a couple of things that did stand out. Um, Sonia and I were discussing this off air before I launched today. And uh, she had mentioned about the, uh, the reader parts and, and yes, for myself, I, um, I struggled with that um, because the, the font size was very tiny. You mean the card, Um, the card reader parts? yeah, or? the card reader part on Yeah. their digital Okay. reader, um, it would say it would be helpful if it said the incoming train is going to, Mm hmm and it didn't, it doesn't say that like where Metro Vancouver, the difference is Metro Vancouver, it actually does say that, like they actually Mm say the train is going to, um, -hmm. Yeah. so that's the difference between the systems. Um, should I say Vancouver should be able to really enhance their service and have multiple directions throughout the day um, for the West Coast Express. Absolutely. It can be done. CP Rail owns the right of way on that line, folks. Um, They're so actually saying Vancouver is going to have have worse tra transit soon because you've heard about all the all the all the uh, cutback. cutbacks that Yeah, they're I was just threatening, going to mention right? about that. They're they're threatening all these all these cutbacks now because they Over they've billion. run out of money. <laughs> Yeah, billions of dollars. Um, and uh, Newsflash, folks, Newsflash. I remember going to a banquet meetings uh, with uh, with Transit at the time. And this was way back when it was BC Transit, not TransLink, BC Transit. And they were warned by an, by a, um, an architecture uh, who, the guy's grandfather, the guy, get this, the guy's grandfather built the English Channel. You know, they one in Europe, Mm. yeah. His grandfather built, he had the blueprints and he showed And he said his father uh, worked with his uncle and built the one in San Francisco, built the under the Bay Bridge, under their, their BART system. So he says, uh, like, things need to change fast. And that was before TransLink became uh, formed as TransLink. And he warned in a meeting, and you know what, they, they, they shuffled it. They wanted to get him out of there. But, but he made it a good point. And I always stuck in my mind because we had Q&A. And I got to ask a question was, um, So are you saying that the population is going to grow? He goes, I'm actually just preparing um, the government for growth and over time. I don't know how much it's going to grow, but we need to be proactive. We need to start building now and we need to build our infrastructure to go around transit, not just not just uh, keep building more roads um, or like or just uh, popping up more buildings. We need to put rapid transit out I, again. Um, It's unfortunate that uh, we are where we are now because now uh, we've got massive growth uh, Yeah. and the infrastructure hasn't kept up with it. Um, Not at so all. when I when I look at when I look at that, it just it really makes me boil because it made sense back then. Because um, I said, well, I just want to be able to get from point A to point B. That's for what I looked at. And when I go on my journeys here, I look at the transit there, and I'm like, wow. And people probably looked at us like, huh? Are they, these two out to lunch? Like, wow, like we're just amazed with the transit. Um, and I could get to and from a community. It was. And, And and yeah. and we you you should say too. I mean, you you've said before lots actually, but she should say again that the the transit on in Vic, Victoria is especially bad, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the Victoria and surrounding communities is especially bad on the island. We should It say. is getting very, um, very congested with traffic now, uh, with a lot of people moving over to Victoria and other parts of southern Vancouver Island and uh, areas like Cowichan, um, to, to Duncan, if people are familiar with what areas that I'm mentioning. Uh, Cowichan Valley is a huge area. Uh, Victoria uh, proper is very big too, right? Because we've got Saanich, uh, the Saanich Peninsula, uh, and we got um, Souk, which is uh, further out of Victoria, um, and the transit, the congestion of the roads, uh, infrastructure, it can't handle the volume. Um, there's always accidents. It's always backed up to transit. Uh, transit can't even get through. Um, not enough road uh, infrastructure. They're widening the roads, which great um, uh, for more improvement of uh, accessibility-wise of getting more volume through of traffic. However, Is it the model of just improving more road structure uh, to because of the volume of people, or should we be looking at putting a like an LRT down through these communities? Um, I would say, I, and some people would probably disagree with me watching this. No, 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 not LRT. Well, there's LRT, okay, light rail transit, and then there's BRT, and that's bus rapid transit. Should we have both modes? I would say yes. I would Mm -hmm. say yes. Let's do both modes in every major urban center, like Victoria, 
Saanich, out to Souk, out to uh, from Vancouver Island, from Victoria, going through Cowichan Valley, out to Nanaimo, out from Nanaimo all the way up to uh, Port Alberni, out to, uh, I mean, Campbell River. Like there's it, yeah. all these areas, okay? And and now we got the BC Ferries now saying that they're having to uh, bring in more uh, new fleets. They're having to order more uh, and, ferries. And again, we should say as well, like uh, there used to be a, a service, uh, Greyhound bus, yeah, and and when I was a kid, I I I rode that bus a few times. It was it was to like Kelowna and Pentic Penticton and yeah. and that, and it was a great. I mean, it it serviced a lot of areas, a lot of communities, it and did. then it just in two thousand eighteen, it went under. Uh, I in my community in Langley, I used that's to a big it. void. It's a big void now. Yeah, I, I used to take it from Langley, and I go up to like Kelowna. I would go. I would take it up to like um, up to Calgary. Uh, Calgary, Alberta. Um, I took it actually when I was younger. I took it all the way to Winnipeg, Manitoba, to visit my dad. And I remember taking the Greyhound all the way from. Um, yeah, we had to do uh, catch the uh, bus right from there, or if you wanted the express, you'd have to catch it right from Vancouver. So I had to backtrack and take it all the way up there because some of the routes would not go through Langley, even though I like, go figure, right? I mean, I lived there, or you take the route where you could get there an ungodly hour into Winnipeg because there was a couple routes. So I have to take the one route that would actually get me there at a reasonable time because my dad, there was no way. He said he would go and be uh, at the Greyhound Depot to pick me up because uh, it wasn't safe then. Imagine now, I don't know that many years later, decades later, <laughs> it's not, not uh, for me, really not safe, but certain hours of the night, um, you know, for safety wise, accessible wise. Um, so I, yeah, I missed the Greyhound. And again, that's an accessibility issue. I know that governments across the Canada it can work together and getting an interurban system uh, arranged. It's just taking that political will to actually do it. Um, the money is there. They're like, oh, no, it's going to cost money. It, 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 the money is there. Again, uh, it's like basic income. The money is there. Let's yeah. just get it done. Um, it's it's but, just called uh, budget choices, right? I mean, yeah, it's money I mean, allocation. It, even it's, on a, even yeah. on an individual level. Yeah, we we each make individual choices on what we want to spend our money on. Like mm -hmm. like you were saying, I mean, how can you afford the train trip? Well, I mean, you're making budgetary choices and sacrifices somewhere else. Yeah. So so you could afford to do the train trip, right? Yeah, but yeah, so, but for to clarify for the train trip, like people always ask, like, okay, well, you paid for the food, but yeah, but how? But how did you afford the ticket? Actually, the ticket was actually given to us um, mm -hmm. from a contribution from a, a donor who um, I really, huh, I just, I am just lost for words. Like I want to thank the person and they want to stay anonymous uh, and they, they helped us out. They told me to get the most value for the dollar, get it as cheap as they could. And that's kind of what they want to do for, for us uh, just to recognize for toward like a birthday or for a Christmas present saying, thank you for your advocacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so again, people who, <clears throat> who want, who appreciate the, all the content that we do on our channel here for our advocacy and bringing all the awareness of all the inequalities that people with lived ex uh, disabilities and lived experience in Canada. Um, if you, if you believe in the content uh, and like you, you share that, that common interest that we do, and say, well, I have a disability. I love to talk about my stories on here. How do I get involved? How do I, how do I contact uh, these guys? Uh, I mean, you know, they're doing an amazing job. But I mean, not that I want to self congratulate myself. And but if you think that we're doing an amazing job and bringing on other guests and uh, politicians and doctors and lawyers and you know, we've had them all on here. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be a guest yourself and you say, yeah, I want to, you know, get in touch. You know, we uh, you, you can contact us through our email addresses, and uh, yeah, the, the, we should say again, like uh, the email addresses are always posted right at the end of the show. Yeah, the, we have the outro at the end of the show. We post yeah. the emails there. The emails are at the bottom of every video in the description. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, and, and we we are at right at the end of the show, Brent. So I don't know. This, we'll sure, we'll we'll, uh, we'll give it we'll give it a few more we'll give okay. it a few more minutes. Uh, <laughs> Sonia, I'm, I'm, her... I'm, I'm trying to rush you out the door. Yeah, okay. Sonia's got her headset on right now. She's listening oh. to a, uh, the actual talk show, and uh, that was kind of the arrangement that I thought she was oh, okay. the live. So okay. we actually we actually have a few more minutes. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good <laughs> she to can't know. even hear me now. She's got her headset on, so it actually <laughs> okay. mutes me out. 
probably a good thing, I guess. Uh, friends talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she does that. Eh? There you go. But, um, yeah. but yeah, to uh, just to kind of uh, look at that uh, part is uh, people who they say, well, you know, I'd, I'd love to donate. Like, how do I do that? I mean, again, our email addresses are there. Uh, if you want to throw us some bucks, uh, if you want to, I mean, I'm not putting any pressure and I'm not making a person feel guilty of saying, oh, they're asking for help. Oh, it's a charity. No, we're not a charity. Yeah, uh, We just put out good content. Um, I I have people reaching out to me all the time saying like, I, I want to come on. I want to talk about what I go through in life, uh, what my, you know, what my children go through too. Um, and I have a guest coming up uh either uh, later this month or the beginning of next month. Uh, and it's going to be coming on and talking. About well, you know, like our last guest was Tamara Taggart. Yes. And even, even she said, um, you know, that a lot of people don't want to speak up and don't want to get involved when it comes to advocacy because they're afraid of being targeted. And, yeah. I, and I know that's a, that's a big thing. I mean, you and I are on the, this podcast and, and, and you and I have, had our share of uh, being targeted. And I know, I know a lot of politicians, MLAs and MPs, they get their share of targets and, and yeah. bows and arrows and, and the whole rest of it. And, right. you know, so whenever you put yourself out there, you you do become a target. And I think, that, I think that's why, you know, it, it takes courage to speak up. It, it takes courage to come forward and, and share your story. And we and we realize that. So, so you know, as much as we, we want to have, people come on the podcast and share their story we do realize it is it is it is a you know it is a big thing to come on and and share mm -hmm. your story because you, you are taking you know a risk that, uh, i might i might take a few bullets or a, a few slings and arrows coming coming on and sharing my story and trying to be yeah. and trying to be an advocate yeah. right just yeah. just just as tamara Ta taggart said well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's nothing wrong with saying how you feel like uh, and I, I've learned that actually through college is uh, doing a self-awareness program. Um, also uh, doing videography and recording yourself and having the class listen back to what you are saying and talking about yourself um, and sitting in a room. And it was like a recording studio. They like had it set up like a recording studio and you got a big window there and a big a big giant microphone i'll have to i'm looking into investing in that i don't know any good ones if anyone uh, has any feedback on that um please let me know i mean or maybe like, you know, maybe you might you, even know you, you mean like a microphone like mine yeah well like i mean tamara taggart she went when she was on she well had... yeah like the one the one i have right now is is a blue yeti and those are yeah. those are really good so yeah uh maybe we can get one of our sponsors to to pony up for for brent because I, I i really like this yeah but also you know too i I have my friend Kent and he says as well, it would be cool if at some point, um, you know, when you do your out and about, when you're doing your breaking with Brent's, mm -hmm. he says like to inv invest in a lapel mic would be awesome. Like a wi wireless lapel mic. Oh, um, so like, could, can you imagine like if you had a wireless lapel mic uh, attached to your shirt or something? Yeah. And uh, you know, then you could actually be, be walking away from, from the, you know the the phone or, or video fo footage mm -hmm. and people could still hear you mm. and and you could also cut down on like wind noise and stuff too so that that was uh that was uh kent's suggestion and, and again my friend kent is is in media he's in radio and and production and art like that's that's his early career was that kind of stuff so he's oh, he's well. coming he's coming in it from from experience when he yeah when lived, he, when lived experience on that part yeah yeah, yeah. Again, if anyone uh, you know uh, looks at that and says, "Hey, you know, let, let's let's get this guy something like that too," uh, I'd be so grateful. Uh, I, you know, again, um, you can reach out through Amazon. Like uh, I've got a lot of little uh, things on Amazon too that um, things that I'm looking at. Uh, but of course, I can always add that to the list. Um, yeah, like I don't know anything too much about all those things, how it works. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, if people know exactly what Neil's mentioning, uh, that would be helpful to uh, to help to really enhance um, the uh, the journeys, uh, the uh, breaking with Brent segments, uh, our travel segments, um, and that's why I usually like, when I'm doing the segments, uh, I'm well aware like sometimes that there's a lot of noise environment around me, so I'll mm -hmm. speak louder 
to make sure that people hear me. If it's windy out, well, then I have to start yelling because I got to make sure people hear me. Well, I, I was just thinking about too, like as a producer, like I was, like I love it when you, I, I'm gonna put on put on my producer hat and stuff like. But like I love it when you, like on uh, your most recent video, you you did uh, a lot of really cool uh, um, first person stuff. I love the first person stuff where you where you just have the the camera and you just. You just start start walking, and you did that. Yeah. You did one where you're you you're walking down the aisle of the tr the train, and, and yeah. that, that was a little bit there. But you you do that you do that a fair bit, and I thought it'd be kind of cool if you could have a bit more separation from the microphone to to the camera, mm -hmm. and then you could have things like maybe maybe you could be starting at you know in front of the camera, and then it's just like walking down a long beach or something, and like walk like. Mm -hmm. way down the beach and people could still hear you or whatever right that'd be kind of cool yeah yeah it's uh yeah. you know and it's uh it's all about um getting the uh, the right equipment to to work mm. with that and you know and it's uh trial by error and see what what is working and what's not on that and um and just kind of uh fine tuning um those kind of segments uh and i i think it's great uh i i enjoyed doing the segment walking through the train that way mm. and uh I was always, you know, very self-conscious because when I'm filming that way and then people were yeah. there and I just kind of get the cameras as I keep on going. And then they realize what I'm doing. It's like, I'm not yeah. focusing on that person. I'm just like doing an overview going yeah. here. And I'm well, with that either. Yeah. Right? And, but, and, and, and I'll, I'll just say too, like, I, I actually w watch a fair bit of YouTube to, to get inspired. Like I, I love photography, so so a lot of the channels that I I watch or, or tune into are are people that talk about photography, mm -hmm. and there, this this one guy that I he's actually a Canadian. He's he's uh, he lives in Toronto, I believe, and uh, he's a really humorous channel. Um, it's called the Camera Conspiracies. I'll just oh. I'll just put out. A, it's just it's hilarious for so for anybody that, that loves camera stuff. He's he's mm -hmm. hilarious. And like I said, he's Canadian too, so it's uh, mm -hmm. all all the much better, right? But uh, anyway, um, he has this thing where he 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 d does a lot of vlogging where he's just on a skateboard mm -hmm. and he does he does, does a lot of slow mo. So he has, has has the camera and he's just yeah. has it mounted to his chest or something, or maybe, maybe oh, nice. like or maybe to like his I but he has, has it uh, kind of inconspicuous where where he's just kind of skateboarding and then, then he's like going down going a, down a toronto street or whatever and he's filming like like uh people walking towards him or whatever and, and he does it in slow-mo and he puts yeah. he puts to, to music oh and yeah. it's, it's the most cool thing but but i, I have to say like the, one of the last videos he one of the last videos he did um he was getting comments saying you're a freak why why are you oh. filming people without their permission and oh. and that's and that's bad but you know, but it was so cool because he trolled that, those comments and he said, what's so bad about, yeah. about filming people in their natural environment? He says, I'm yeah. not being, I'm not being crude or, or a freakish. He says, I'm just filming people. He says, general, yeah. he says it's like a, An overview. He, he basically sees it as uh, human wildlife. That's what, that's the term he used is human wildlife. And mm -hmm. he says, I'm, I'm just capturing the essence of people in their in, the, the best essence of people in in their perfect environment yeah. and that's that's what i love it like i know you don't go out of your way to lurk around people either yeah but what i was going to say is uh, like the like i was saying with that uh, camera guy that i watch is when mm -hmm. he's just filming people like um you know when, when you did the you did the segment in, in um new york remember right. and at the end you had the yes. whole long it was like over a minute you had the yep. whole long segment of walking down the street and you had yep. all this like crowds of people yep. coming and towards you and they just kind of parted like this just yeah, like yeah. Yeah, just like kind of... moses you know like they were moses and they just kind of parted for you you know yeah. and it was it, it was it's like it was the coolest thing when they kind of uh, veered off and yeah. i found that when i was doing uh, filming on the train um because there was one part and i um i actually had done redone a little bit of this one recording because i i filmed in these um, someone had said, oh, well, hey, well, hang on. Uh, what are you using that footage for? I, so I explained them. It's about my advocacy, about train travel, um, just bringing the, uh, the, the journey to people's attention on uh, lived experience, of, of the experience of going through the train travel, uh, the different modes of coach, 
uh, I mean, accommodation and then coach on the way back, right? Mm -hmm. And like, oh, cool. And I said, so this is like a videography of our journey. Oh, neat. I said, so I wasn't filming you directly. Um, and she's oh, okay, cool. And uh, so I had to kind of explain that. Yeah. And so they said, okay, did you want to re-record? I go, if I could, yeah. And so, and then I asked everybody in this one car, like I said, this is what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Because they weren't sure. And so they were all fine. And I had the one person who was actually, it's unfortunate because she she wanted to, she believed in our av our advocacy, by the way, uh, like wholeheartedly. Um, and I'm hoping that she's actually watching our YouTube channel because she's going to subscribe to it. And she says, I really love um, watching um, train travel stuff and people's journey through life. And I said, okay, cool. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I filmed it and it's too bad that she wasn't there because she was actually going to say hi and jump in. And, and I yeah. thought that would have been so cool. She was going to say, hi, just pop out of nowhere. <laughs> that that's, like, that's that's cool. Yeah, that would have been, been, been just uh, we, priceless. We, we, we could do more of that maybe in the future too. Like, uh, you know, have have meetups maybe of like, like uh, we'll, we'll have a meetup at like a Tim Hortons or something. I don't yep. know. But I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool, right? And, it's and, great. And like I said, like, like that's my thing of, of people that that uh, push back on on uh, filming, like, mm -hmm. and, and like you're you're violating privacy. And 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 this is what this guy on Camera Conspiracy said. He says, like, all I'm doing is I'm filming human wildlife. Uh, you're out in public. Mm -hmm. You're out in public already. So yeah. if you're if you're out in public already, it means that you're okay being seen. Yeah. Like if you're not okay being seen, then you wouldn't be out in public. Well, it's right? like a, like a cameraman no. when they're out there, like a news hour when they're actually on live on location. Yeah. People are walking behind them, and this night yeah. you see them. I mean, they're not worried about their being on uh, TV yeah. or something like. Yeah. If um, you're out in public, then you're kind of fair game. Like it, it, you're yeah. basically human wildlife, like like the guy on Camera Conspiracy says. It, it's like know, that so. one part when we arrived in um, in Toronto, uh, we got off the train. Uh, it was so neat, uh, neat because the accessibility wise, when you got off the train in the same building and the buildings that she divided into areas for the transit. Um, at first, I was I felt like I was lost because and you can get lost in there. Oh, yes. I've talked to people who actually live there and they said they can actually get lost. But you find your way really quickly around uh, because accessibility wise, where there's attendance everywhere you look, there's attendance attendance for each mode of transportation. So if you're taking a go, uh, go transit, you're taking their TTC, you're taking their streetcar, um, and the, which, which is very neat too, by the way. <clears throat> and we did a segment on that one, pulling up the train. That was so neat. And I didn't understand like the terminology. I kept saying people, well, I just want to take the streetcar. Oh, okay. So the subway, so you need to go down this way. No, the, the streetcar, you know, the one that runs on, on ground above. Yeah. And I guess they didn't understand what I was saying. The one person. So they sent us down the one way. Oh, the we red train. Down. And they're like, bring me yeah, to the red train. <laughs> you need to catch it from here. I'm like, yeah. Oh, so he sent us down. Like we were already here. So we were like backtracking back and forth. And I found with my um, accessibility wise, using a transit pass, I was mm -hmm. able to get through uh, and, it worked really well with me for accessibility wise, again, through gate systems. Um, um, I didn't feel uh, at unease at any point of time. Um, so mm -hmm. I must uh, want to be thankful to go transit there in Ontario, the TTC, um, the, the, all your, your transportation networks that you have there, very accommodating uh, security people everywhere around there too. Yeah. They have, they watch well, everything. Yeah. And that's another big thing that's difference be between uh, Toronto and Vancouver is because oh, yeah. like before, like I remember, and I'm sure you do too. Like when, when, uh, when the SkyTrain was first put in and, and like many, many years afterwards, like mm -hmm. uh, the uh, train attendants or the, the track attendants, mm -hmm. you, they, they would have attendants just at the stations or like the station yeah. attendants and that they would just pop on and off the train. And yeah. that, that would be a regular thing on, on every station, on mm -hmm. every station, they would post somebody like usually two people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was a common thing. And now like, it's like, you, you don't see anybody like there's no security, nothing. There's like a camera mm -hmm. that's, that's maybe looping every like half an hour or something. I mean, who knows? Mm -hmm. I'm, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm being sarcastic, but, I mean, who really knows, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
but you know, there's cameras there, sure, but there's no attendant there. There's there, yeah. you very rarely see any security there. Um, you only see um, you only see uh, police or transit security kind of after after the fact. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody's passed out on the on on a causeway or something, you'll you'll see them then. But mm -hmm. that's like after the fact. Well, I noticed uh, I noticed when I was at the uh, Union Station, uh, they uh, for their TTC, for instance. Uh, I mean, wow, they got all their gate systems, and you have to tap your card in order to get through. And they have attendants all there. They have them all there. They have security there. They have attendants there. They have other ones that are um, there, like for the gates. Okay, so they can actually control the gates and override things. They also have other attendants there. That will uh, make sure that people are, um, you know, if they're not sure where they're going, to direct them to other areas, other modes of transportation. So, like, layers of layers upon attendance. And I thought, wow, and they're all communicating with each other. I heard somebody from a distance around their CB, and they, I guess they saw us coming. And uh, next thing I went, uh, a lady walked up and she goes, hi, um, are you needing help to find out where you're going? I said, yeah, like, what gate number do I go to to catch the GO train? Uh Okay, so where are you going? So I'd say where we're going. And uh, okay, so on the digital monitor, um, it would actually tell you where you're going. Okay, but what if I can't read that? Like, I that's pretty small print. Oh, okay. Uh, I said, yeah, I can't read that. Like, I can, I see, I see the image. I just can't read what it actually is saying. Oh, okay. So she says, no problem. So she starts reading it out to me. Oh, oh, oh. I said, oh, no, neat. And she goes, and if you're still not sure, um, I'll come back and I'll follow up with you. Um, and looks like they're going to give an update. Um, what they do is they give an update of what track that train is going to be arriving from at the mm -hmm. Union Station where it's going to. Well, I couldn't see. It was there um, unless I stood really far up there. But even then, like it was still up on an angle. And so the, uh, the attendant came by and said, um, yeah, so I, I'll come closer to the time. It looks like there'll be an update in like about 17 minutes. Okay, so we waited. And it uh, looks, oh, looks like it's a bit sooner than that. I guess the train must have came in sooner. So she comes by and she goes, okay, so you're going to go through gate number six or seven. Oh, and so you now have to go down. You actually had to go down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, neat. So, yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. it was like layers of where you need to go to for the tracks. And I looked over and guess what? I looked and Via Rail sitting over there. They oh. see Via Rail sitting over on the other. And I hey, wait a minute. That was the train that we were on. They have another one parked there, and then they had one, I guess, being serviced. Mm -hmm. So, again, everything is all connected there of where you need to be. Uh, mm -hmm. I Again, they, um, they were amazing uh, customer service uh, for accessibility-wise. They helped me uh, even see that uh, from a distance, um, which I thought was great. Uh, again, if it would be helpful if they actually gave audible announcements, Mm -hmm. Maybe it might be because I uh, might be more cumbersome. I don't know because so many trains come and going, but they could say an update gate six, seven train going to blah, blah, you know, or whatever. And then every so often they would update stuff. I mean, it can be done technology wise. That's the only drawback that I saw was the, uh, for audible wise, um, visual wise. Yes. Uh, having the attendant come by and actually help with that. That was amazing. Um, so I thank you on that. Um, memorable experience via rail um, again if you have an opportunity of taking the train uh, you know and I'm, I don't get paid by via rail just everybody knows I'm not paid or sponsored by via rail or promoting their stuff we, um, we want just, to be we want uh, to be maybe when, wouldn't that be nice if I was uh, <laughs> yeah, a sponsored uh, promoter for via rail uh, hey if you want to be a promoter I could, I could sponsor you uh, uh, and, and via rail if you, if you believe in our channel too um, yeah, if you want to be a sponsor, reach out or anybody wants to be a sponsor mm -hmm. for our channel here. I mean, reach out to us. Uh, and we're not going to say no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks. You know, and, um, you know, there's so much, uh, excitement of talking about the journey though. Uh, I mean, since I've got a few minutes here, I will, I'll dive into about the accommodation part because I didn't, really, didn't really dive into that. Um, it, the time went by so fast. When we were in Toronto, uh, we tried to take in as much of our sightseeing as we could. Um, but before we, but before we, you know, we even left Toronto, like when we got there, our journey um, was really memorable. Um, and I want to thank somebody very, uh, very special um, and very dear, actually two people in particular, mm -hmm. um, Bertie, uh, 
it was great to see you. Hey, Brady. Yeah, it was really great to see you. Um, we spent the day with uh, a good part of the day with Bertie, uh, and people went, "Well, who's Bertie?" Uh, Bertie is our secretary. One secretary. of our secretary for our, our for, beloved secretary. Our beloved yeah. secretary for PWD yeah. Allies podcast. Um, behind the scenes, does amazing stuff. Uh, she does a lot of our graphic stuff too. Uh, and I mean, and you know, of course, I want to you know reach out directly to my editor producer right here, Neil Matheson, uh, for your outstanding work that you do too. Um, you keep me in line. Um, you know and. Uh, making sure that the show runs great too uh and so you're just amazing too uh obviously at all times um so i mean thank you neil just, again just tell my wife that yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and thanks to neil's wife too for, for keeping neil in line too <laughs> um yeah. you know and also you know i i am the other uh, individual too that um sonia and myself were uh we were just uh over amazed um the person we ran into, we wanted to check out. We were told to check out Square One Mall okay, when we got there. And I said, okay, it was on my bucket list. I thought, well, looking at maps, I'm thinking, oh, how am I going to get there? Like from where we were, you know, going to visiting and all these things. And how am I going to incorporate that? And it was actually a lot closer than I thought. So we we made our, our way up there. And I said to um, uh, the uh, hotel that we stayed at uh, also when, when we were there, plus our other journeys, but um i uh, she said well how do i get to square one? Oh, oh, you just take the bus and you know blah blah and i said oh okay so the bus stop that we got off at yeah that's right and just catch that and just tell the bus driver where uh, operator where you're going and they'll take you right there and it was it was hop skip and a jump it didn't take that long mm -hmm. and so we got there and looked around uh i think there's over 350 stores i didn't look at all that it was just it would have taken a couple of days to do that and some of the stores I wasn't really interested in anyway. It was high high end stores, and you know, just that wasn't interest to me. We did check out uh, Chick Fil A. Amazing, amazing, amazing food. Uh, never been there. Heard about it. Uh, Sonia and myself, we had stumbled across that in uh, New York. We never got. We never had a chance to check it out when we were there. So we heard that they had just launched it at Square One. We wanted to check it out, and so I. Uh, got the camera out there right away and the lady standing up oh no 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 she's like no 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 i said that's okay i said that's fine you're not going to be on video we just i just want to get a picture of the video of the actual menu so we got that and so she says okay so she put her hand over her face while i recorded and i just you know and but i made sure the camera would blow her down and she knew what i was yeah. doing and she was yeah. all good spirit with it and, yeah um again good awesome customer experience there uh, i'd say overall neil and all the listeners and viewers um, we had a, a outstanding time with customer service um, out there uh, uh, in Ontario and the GTA the surrounding areas. Um, very hospital, uh, hospital. I can't hospitable. Hospita Hospi yeah, yeah. Uh, hospitable. Yeah. Hospitable. I can never pronounce that word right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it was. Um, it basically made us feel very welcome. Um, and, like, you, and, and you didn't mention Joseph yet. Too. Well, you see, <laughs> Joseph was the person who we ran into because I, I yeah. contacted Joseph when we were at the square one and mm -hmm. Joseph answered us. Hello. And I said, hi. And he goes, where are you? And he already knew he, he knew that we were already out there. He knew. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so I said, um, yeah, so we're at square one. Oh, shoot. If you would have called me sooner, I was just down. I could meet you at Union Station. I go, uh, yeah. So how long does it take to get to Union? From there, he goes, oh, no, 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 no. He says, I've already left from there. I'll, um, say, can you meet us at square one? Well, uh, where are you going to be heading from there? I said, well, we're going to be heading back to where, you know, where we need to get off our train. And so he said, okay, okay. So I'll tell you what, um, give me like 45 minutes. It's going to take you a good time from the time you leave the mall and catch the bus to get down to where you're going anyway. And mm -hmm. it's going to take you a good hour anyway. And, and probably myself, so you know, within that time frame, 45 minutes to an hour, we're going to meet uh, there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And uh, so we got on the bus and we got over there and it was hot. It was really, really hot. The hum humidity was very high. Um, something that we had, we were not used to from the West coast. Right. <laughs> um, and it got boiling hot and it felt like almost like 40 something degrees out. It was, you know, like, yeah. 
So anyway, we got on the bus and nice air conditioning. So we got on, made arrangements with, with uh, Joseph. Well, we got off the train, uh, off the bus, got to the train station. And guess who was waiting there from a distance? Big smile on the face. We're still on the bus. And Sonia looked, hey, that looks like Joseph. Yep. Uh -huh. So, and he saw the bus pulling up. He was already there. He got there before we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, we come along and, hello, everyone. <laughs> so he says, well, yeah, look, look who it is. Hello. <laughs> I said, it's the numbers guy. It's the numbers guy. And it was yeah. great. It was um, awesome meeting up with you, Joseph. Uh, we had a fantastic time. I look forward to doing that again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it um, definitely was a memorable experience. Uh, and I still have those pins, to Joseph. Derb, I still have the bag. Um, and <laughs> I did a, Neil and myself recently attended a uh, town hall meeting through Zoom. And uh, Mike Morris, uh, I showed Mike Morris the bag, uh, yeah. Derb pins. So anyone who's interested in wants one uh, or some, let me know. Uh, reach out mm -hmm. to us and I can make arrangements to get them, some of them to you. Uh, I have no problem doing that. Um, we need to get uh, the, uh, the, um, the momentum back out there again. The politicians want to shut down that uh, division of Derb. Um, yeah. we became a very, uh, major headache to them. Uh, I think a migraine at times. Um, however, uh, you've created migraines for people with disabilities to, uh, politicians across the country, uh, by not, uh, keeping up with, you know, no less than poverty level as Jeff Leggett would always mention. Um, and so I, I keep that narrative going also, uh, yeah, and your, I'm, and your petition that, that you and I worked on, yeah, yeah. uh, it's five zero four seven. Yeah. That's going to be um, spoken of in the house now, uh, probably around maybe October ish. October twenty fourth, I believe it is, um, or maybe sooner. It depends on when. It, it, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it'd be somewhere around October. I wasn't sure. It might when. get dropped uh, sooner than that. Um, I can give, give it a little bump. Uh, I'll talk to the MP. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, that's that's, that's cool. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. And, and so when I say the politicians gave PWD a migraine, um, you know, like the situation is not going away, everyone. Like people who are um, being taken care of or supposed to be taken care of, yeah, let me reword that, are supposed to be taken care of yeah. on provincial disability um, assistance. Uh, they used to be pensions at one time um, mm -hmm. back in the late 1990s. Unfortunately, the governments chose that no, nah, we, we don't want to make them pensions any longer. Why, why should they be like seniors that have pensions? No, yeah. we want to make them uh, heavily uh, income means tested um, because they, the job was, was what was supposed to just to solve everything. Just get them a job. Just get them a job. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I always hear the rhetoric from like the Ontario government. Just get them a job. BC, same thing. Well, you know, Brent, if you're able to, uh, maybe you might want to consider getting a job. Yeah. Well, I had a job. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not physically, I'm not able to do the kind of work that I used to be able to do. Um, I guess it's yeah. what you tell seniors too, when they get really old too. Uh, yeah, your pension's not big enough. Yeah, get off the chair, get off the couch, yeah. get a job, right? I'm yeah, so and, and, and that's people. that's always been the number one thing for me too, is yeah. like, there's so many it. people, there's so many people that had jobs, including, yeah. my, including myself. Exactly. Uh, for many years. I worked for, for decades. For, yeah. for 20 years, at least for me. Yeah. And, and I mean, and again, I mean, we, we could turn this in, into another two hour yeah, podcast, yeah. but, but I, we won't do it. No, but, but, uh, you know, one thing I always say is, um, you know, I, me and my metaphors, right. But I always say that, that, uh, people with disabilities are, our work life is measured in dog years. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is for every year that I've worked or for every, for every year that anybody with a disability works, it's equivalent to seven years because that's that, that, or it's equivalent to one dog year, which is, which is seven, seven, years. seven human years. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not even exaggerating that one year of work for me and for, for most everybody on, on disability, you, you take a lot of wear and tear on your body. Mm -hmm. So oh, that, yeah. that, that one year or that 20 years of of overall work that I did, which is, and we're, we're talking like 20 years, mostly of like um, eight hour, like four hour work weeks, mostly. Um, and so you have, you have like 20 years of that. That's equivalent. 140 that's, years. 
that's a quapoon to 140, and that, that's yeah, not 140 years old, Dale. And, and that's not even a, per, a hyperbole. It it sounds like hyperbole. It sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. No, exactly. And, and I wish, I wish uh, MLAs and I wish MPs and 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 all and everybody would would realize how much how much toil and 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 is put on a, a disabled body. Mm -hmm. Twenty years of 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 that on a on a disa disabled body is 140 years worth. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not even an exaggeration. It's not not hyperbole. It's the truth. And 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 so for for me to work 20 years and, and then for for David Eby and 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 every every um pre premier before him to say, well, just get a job. Well, I had a job for 20 years and now you're disrespecting my survivor's pension. You know, so so how fair is that? That that I've worked an equivalent of of 140 years. If you if you take it in dog years, I've I've worked 140 years, and you're saying, well, 140 years isn't good enough. You don't deserve your pension. Too bad. We're going to claw that back. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I, like I said, I I didn't want to really go down that rabbit hole, but I did anyway. But you yeah, know. that's okay. I mean, it's uh, you have to bring the uh, the awareness to people who don't understand how the how uh, the system works and like how people with disabilities, what, like, you know, what, what they endure on a day-to-day -day basis and, and every year, um, and then hoping that there's going to be a rate increase uh, to their provincial uh, disability, um, you know, and then the government pats themselves on the shoulders or whatever, whatever government is across the Canada uh, says, oh, but look what we did, right? I mean, how many raises did we give all oh, little peanuts here and there and how many times that they've raised the rates? Well, why not just bring it up to no less than poverty level, like minimum, like I even... I mean, that's the bare minimum, even more. I mean, because people who have disabilities have ongoing expenses, medication expenses, um, whatever the con your condition is or multiple conditions. I mean, uh, it's like always, the government always likes to compare like apples to oranges all the time uh, or one size fits all saying, oh, a job, like, you know, and and like, uh, and it's just so much rhetoric. Um, they know at the end of the day, the answer. And I know this. They know the answer at the end of the day. I talked to some people on the train when I was traveling. So I got to know some more information and the government knows the answer. It's just what they want to uh, put a rhetoric out there to their stakeholders to make it look like, look what we're doing. Yeah. We're trying to fill the void by giving a speech out saying jobs. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, they know that PWD, uh, if they were able to do uh, work, they would be doing that. If they're not able to do it, you need to be providing no less than poverty level. And when I, I mentioned Jeff along our way, um, Jeff, and so I, I promoting, you know, our, our narrative, like, well, your narrative, but I promote it out there um, because I believe that nobody should be um, living in legislative poverty in Canada. It should not even be a, a discussion at any level of yeah. government of anybody um, who yeah, is not even getting the proper financial supports. Um, the proper housing, the proper health care, I mean, transit, I mean, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, I advocate in so many different areas, I, but I stay pretty straightforward on the areas that I really um, are really focused on. Um, yeah. And I, of course, then I get off on a tangent because there's so many areas I want to try and tackle. Like we're doing but, now, that's okay. But right now. Um, yeah, but, but uh, you know, and, and like Jeff Leggett like, always says, like, like uh, poverty level is the minimum, right? And yeah. and I mean that's all that that uh, Jeff Leggett uh, is advocating for. And and sometimes he gets a target on his back because mm -hmm. people say say, well, why yeah. are you only adv uh, advocating for poverty level? Well, well, I mean you got to that should be the baseline. That should yeah, be baseline. like baseline, and then and then add on to that maybe. But we're not even we're not even like there yet so oh, well, we're at not least at least get to the poverty level first and then you know well yeah exactly and when i i mentioned about a lot of the advocacy stuff that we do i promoted our channel i talked about jeff leggett um on um, the journeys across canada uh advocating for his his uh you know um self-advocate uh, advocacy uh of looking out for his brothers and sisters uh you know, uh, mothers and fathers of people with disabilities across Canada. And yes, like we all vote, uh, everybody, we all vote. And I guess that's where I'm going to branch this topic off to here. Um, 
and it's all it's all about advocacy. It's all about accessibility wise too, right? It's, this is all kind of integrated all into one part of like the show about when I say accessibility of talking to people along the journey. Uh, and I talk about accessibility wise when it comes to um, the train versus uh, and you know transit wise and government listening. Um, it was amazing the people that I spoke to about having common interest. Like it was amazing that. That when you're on a train, you got so much the, the time on there, like time stands still, and the amazing conversations that you can get into, uh, and it really opened my eyes to realize that, yeah, like we are doing a great thing, Neil. We are doing uh, an amazing thing with our advocacy, um, like the channel here, um, and uh, you know, I was encouraged to really uh, to really blossom things, um, and and that's what Actually we're doing. Actually, can I say say one more yeah. thing? Because because yeah. we just we just hit the um, eighty thousand uh, views mark oh just a, just a few just a few uh, uh, days ago. And oh I mean, you, you have to you have to remember you have to remember that that I was I was using the channel a little bit when when mm -hmm. you had when you had the um, the Twitter Spaces. Yeah. I was I was taking little bits of of those Twitter spaces and and posting some videos. Mm -hmm. So that was in 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 2022 I started using the channel for yeah. that. But but honestly nobody was watching those videos, right? No. I mean nobody cared. I mean let's be honest, nobody even knew about my channel. No nobody cared. So it's only been it's only been in the last 20 months we we we've been on YouTube exclusively now. It's been 20 months. It's been it's been a, a year and about a year and eight months that we've been exclusively on uh, YouTube. So all of the growth, all of the growth of this YouTube channel has happened in, in the last year and eight months. And so for, for us to get to 80,000 views and we're over mm -hmm. 600 subscribers now. Which, oh, wow. Amazing. Which is, we just we just hit that, too. That is so and, cool. And it's it's great. So uh like I miss you want to I subscribe, just, things subscribe. Yeah, I, I just encourage everybody to share out the stuff and to subscribe and and you know, like, subscribe, comment, all and, that stuff. And the yeah. ones that were um, that I've interacted with on the uh, on the Via Rail traveling long. Um if you uh, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're watching, please subscribe. Um and you might be some of the ones who have subscribed actually um yeah. along the journey, which I know. I know some of you have um, because I, I did interact with some of you and I know, I know that uh, for sure you have because I have given out the like, cards along the journey along the way. And some of them were actually following while on our other journey that we did. Some of them actually were following back and sending me uh, messages saying, yay. So I, I see that you're doing the VR rail. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? We're actually rewatching some of the other footage. And so people were actually following along the journey and they said, it's so amazing um on looking at uh the landscape of the beautiful country along the prairies that we that we went through um uh, like just miles and miles of open air like um like just nothing there like it was it was so peaceful and the train just clipping along so fast uh, 136 kilometers an hour at some points it was just yeah. like just and you know, the train's just going but it was like st time stood still Mm -hmm. uh, an amazing part where you're going through northern Manitoba and there was no cell phone signal in certain parts. Even the prairies, there was times where there was no signal. It would drop off. I would try to upload into like the drive there, Neil. I would so and I didn't realize what was going on here. Well, yeah, in order to upload to the drive, you still need an internet connection. Right. And I thought, what? I'm like, oh man, I then I realized after. And it kept sitting here waiting, waiting, trying to think, oh, yeah. no, no internet connection. So I had to then delete it and just wait because otherwise what happened was it would come through as incomplete and it would all get all garbled up. So I'm like, oh, I was just like, oh, okay, that's okay. Um, technology can wait. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I mingled with people and talked about our advocacy, um, about lived experience uh, people go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, a gentleman, um, I one, I'll tell his story. Mm -hmm. Um, gentleman was, uh, was going to work one morning and he had said bye to his wife and his two children. And uh, he woke up, um, he woke up two weeks later in, in hospital. The last thing he remembered was saying bye to his wife. He didn't know what happened. He woke up 
and he was in hospital. Um, he was told that he would never move again. Uh, he would be, he's, he was paralyzed from waist down. Um, he had access to one arm. Uh, um, he lost his one arm. So he was able to have, uh, but he, he was got per, um, aesthetics put on. So he was able to actually use his arm, but not, I guess, uh, artificially. So what was the accident? Did you uh, basically motor vehicle accident, a drunk oh. driver, a drunk driver um, guy decided that yeah, he was done an overnight shift. He uh, was doing um, some maintenance work and uh, he was on his way to work. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't arrive back to his work site. I uh, would end up in hospital. Um, a person decided to uh, leave the uh, leave the pub where he was, uh, where I guess he was at. And mm. Bartender said, "Have a good night," and didn't uh, maybe gave him a few a few extra drinks that he probably shouldn't have had. Um, uh, I'm really against uh, that myself. Um, drinking and driving. Mm. Uh, I'm really against that. Um, I lost a friend of mine uh, way back when. Drinking and driving. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear people drinking and driving, um, it really impairs. Well, and, and we we lost, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Goudreau and his, his brother. Yes. Just just very recently. The yes. Ho hockey, hockey player. Well, actually, they were yep. both hockey players. Yep. Um, you know, young guys. Yeah. Young, young guys. Well, that's what I mean. This guy, he was young, too. Like, he yeah. and um, he uh, he told me his story. I mean, he's... Uh, he was told that he would be uh he had no feeling further down at all uh and his it was a spinal cord uh it was just it was completely yeah uh but anyway i just kind of summing up this story i mean that he says never never take life for granted he told me mm -hmm. um because you know things can change so rapidly so quick mm -hmm. uh and he says no fault of the person I um, mean, he already had uh, a learning disability, like when he uh, when he was younger. So this is compound to him. I said, huh. I said, yeah, that's okay. Just pile more on there, bud. Just pile more disabilities onto it. Why not? Yeah. His sense of humor was, it was, he just got me just laughing. He goes, what the hell? Why not just, he just stack it up, he says. What the hell? I mean, why not add more, add more? He says, add more shrimp to the barbe, sorry, sir. Yeah. And I said, oh, and the guy came by with, um, with uh, some cocktails. When we were there, they were complimentary. When you have sleeper, they come by with this one that's complimentary stuff. And would you like this, sir? Would you like? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> what is that? Uh, and I think I kind of ticked them off a bit. Like, what, what is that? Um, they're hors d'oeuvres. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Her, anyway. First of her. Yeah, first, first of her. her. <laughs> okay, it was a, it was it was quite comical. Actually, Bertie's Bertie's gonna, gonna get upset that I said that, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, no, she's just, <laughs> that's not how you pronounce that. <laughs> yeah. But, the, uh, but yeah, hearing people's stories about, uh, and, and the guy he was a good sense of humor. He had a good sense of humor about um, what he had gone through. I mean, I guess you have to uh, just take life as it is. And it says never take it for granted. But it says government should never take it for granted either. They're supposed to be there to take care of their citizens. And um, there's another uh, segment that I, uh, that we'll, we'll get into. Um, I learned some stuff actually through, uh, Mike Morris, when we did their town hall, and I'll be doing a little segment on that one. Um, I'll give you a little hint, Neil. Well, you you were there. Um, mm -hmm. It was about housing. Yeah. So okay. people will be thinking, what? What's he talking about housing? Something about people think that everyone should have housing. Well, I learned something in there, and I didn't even know that. So that was uh, really actually that that what that was interesting. Actually, I think it was I an eye opener that I, I think I think I know what you're getting yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, and it and was we'll a, just, quite an eye opener indeed, right? Yeah, because yeah, uh, and we'll just we'll just leave it there. But yeah, we'll leave it. We'll perk it on that one. But yeah. stay tuned, everyone, on that part because yeah. uh, you'll be okay. I think he was talking about something, but I'm not going to. It's like mm. pulling the cat out of the of the bag, eh? Uh, yeah. It's, Schrodinger's uh, cat again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's where I was going on that one. Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, because <laughs> it's uh, it's important um, when it comes again to uh, access having the right uh, accessible housing. Um, you know, and that comes to transit wise. Um, my journey on there was great. Um, it's a very memorable. Um, and you know, you look at what works, what doesn't work. Um, again, on via rail, if People have allergies to certain foods. They do have an allergy menu. Like they do, they will actually work with your allergies and give you a different uh, food that will that will work uh, for your for your situation. Indeed, 
and they ask you that too like uh you know do you have allergies to certain things and yeah and so you just fill it out and um dan, dan just popped into chat and we're, oh. we're just about to ready to leave yeah. hi dan <laughs> it's like he always seems to pop in just when we're about to pop out of the pop out of the podcast yeah. but anyway hi dan hey dan <laughs> Um, yeah, Dan. Sorry that we weren't able to uh, to meet up when we uh, when we got out there. Um, I know that uh, you're very busy with uh, the um, the, the uh, council uh, stuff. Yeah, I hope it's going. I hope it's going well. Yeah, too, yeah. I, I hope your yeah. your campaign's going great. And yeah. uh, again, uh, reach out to uh, reach out to Dan uh, and uh, give him uh, give him your uh, your thumbs up to uh, to what he's uh, what he's uh, wanting to run for and to make change. Same thing. His advocacy. It's yeah. so important uh, in his uh, community. Uh, and he's doing kind of what we're doing, like uh, what we're advocating for change. He's advocating yeah. for change in his community. Uh, and anyone who's running for public office or uh, at a municipal level, um, everyone's advocating for a change of what they want to see changed. Mm -hmm. um, and what do I want to see it changed as an overview? To conclude, um, I want to see more accessible transit across Canada. There's no reason why we can't. I, I need to see the federal government start stepping up to the pony here. Okay, start stepping up and actually providing proper uh, transportation a network across Canada and connecting communities together. Um, it, you know, doing the blame game for saying, oh, well, the provinces are not allocating the money properly. If that is the issue, and I don't know if it's the issue, okay, put it to where it's supposed to go to and say, okay, this is going to go to transportation. This is going to go to health care. This is going to go to housing. This is going to go to income supports. This is, you know, channel it to where it needs to go and make sure that it's going to where it's supposed mm -hmm. to go to. If you're worried that it's going to go into general revenue in the government, if there's a problem there, well, then communicate, communicate. Yeah, and, with don't, the, and don't just put it towards another FTE. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, I mean, like I, I used to work in government too, like as, as an FTE. FTE. Yeah. So I know, I know what FTEs are, right? Yes. And I mean, you don't, you don't need another body. I exactly. mean, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna put uh, put disability supports uh, part of part of them is to pay salaries for another uh, full time employee of of the pro provincial government. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not that's not allocating your funds properly. <laughs> well, exactly, and it's about accountability of where where federal uh, does their transfer payments, and they are they're all transfer payments over to the provinces. And if they're worried, well, it's going into general revenue. If it's supposed to, if those transfer payments for PWD are supposed to go to PWD, then you make sure the finance minister is actually putting it to PWD, not into general revenue. Or, or well, here you go. We need to have uh, we need to have ten staff members in this one ministry, and yeah. this one needs eight. That one needs ten or we eight. Have, we have ten staff members for for every yeah. one person. To, yeah, and so <laughs> then they say, well, what's the right hand, left hand doing? Who yeah. are they communicating with? Um, so I need to make sure that, you know, things are allocated properly. I mean, we can make, say, you know, Canada a much better place. Uh, it's all about communicating and working together. Um, advocates, I mean, I, you know, again, uh, you know, we, over time, since we launched the Twitter space and then we now, now we're over to where we are now, um, we branched to, to a new horizon. Um, we found over time, like what is working, what wasn't working, um, maybe, you know different communications on advocacy wise i learn from people i i you know i i've made mistakes along the way I, i've said maybe a few things that you know in advocacy wise that maybe i didn't understand or i because i learned from people people learn from me i learned from them um mm -hmm. we all have our own avenues for advocacy uh, advocating at the end of the day we all want to achieve the same thing it's on different approaches on how we get to where it is um in basically it is a bit kind of working together in different areas, maybe not directly like right together, but as an overview, right? So when I'm waving my hands on the screen, people say, what? So I'm waving my hands as a, as a circle, right? Meaning like a circle working together um, and achieving the same goal. What is the same goal? Happiness, autonomy. Autonomy is a strong word. And, yeah. and some people will say, Brent, careful on that word autonomy. Well, when I'm using the word autonomy, I'm going to use the word autonomy in a, in a certain context here. Yeah. And that word, uh, I'm using the word right now as autonomy is letting PWD in Canada, whatever province they live in, to make their decision 
Okay, government, okay, government, I want you to listen to this carefully. Let the PWD and their province make their proper decision based on what their needs are. So number one, if they want to live in market housing, let them stay in market housing. Give them the proper financial support. If they want to live in subsidized housing under, uh, if it's like, while well, we're in BC, so BC housing, if it's through a nonprofit society, for-profit society, it all stems under BC housing. Again, that's another rant uh, on another show. Uh, again, it's- Well, what, we did one uh, not very recently, actually, all, yeah. all about BC housing. Yeah. And that uh, again, boondoggle, boondoggle is the yeah. Name people the want to refer back to that segment. Yeah. Uh, I talk about that a lot on there, and what I learned through BC Housing. Again, giving the proper financial support, but giving the autonomy to that person, so they they can make the right decisions that they feel is based on what their needs are, not what government says. That oh well, we're building housing, we're building housing. Great, great, and I encourage them to build more housing. I I'm not saying don't build housing. Because somebody had brought that to my attention, Brent. You you mentioned on, on your podcast that uh, people need to live in this kind of housing, right? I what I'm saying is that people need to make that decision where they want to live. And sure, government can be building or uh, getting housing built through nonprofits or for profits. I know it's confusing because there is the private sector and public sector, and that can be done under government. And also that can also be done under um, under REITs, um, under this sector of housing. Or so, another one is co-ops. Not, not enough, co-ops, yes. No, no, not enough co-ops are done now. Yeah, and those think. are those are done under government sector too, like they're mm-hmm. for profit or not for profit. There's I learned this through an MLA too, where it's actually it gets confusing because they they said the person told me it can get very confusing for them because uh, there's the the public sector where. Um, you know, governments control like they, they they have their kind of their umbrella housing, but there's also the sector where you get the the mom and pop uh, type of um, you know housing where maybe they own a house, maybe they want to rent a basement suite, maybe they want to rent their townhouse out or their condominium out, or you rent or you live in an apartment building or a condominium, whatever the case may be. That is a different kind of sector of housing. Now, a lot of PWD persons with disabilities in in BC and across Canada live in that sector of housing. So what I'm saying is that I, when I say that I want the government to listen carefully, I want you to listen, listen to what their needs are, what, they, what the person's needs are. If they want to continue living in that sector of housing, maybe they live in a basement suite and they're happy with their landlord, but they mm-hmm. but the landlord wants to raise their rent. Okay, yeah. well, no fault of the person. They just want to live there, but there, they don't have enough. There aren't very the, many the, rents that are 500 bucks. Exactly. Yeah. Tell me government where you can find rent at five hundred dollars, living in a uh, in market housing, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Impossible anywhere in Canada. And, and they know that. They know. Yeah, that. they they know. At the end of the day, it's rhetoric, right? It's rhetoric, um, you know. And so when I say autonomy wise, uh, oh, I want I want them to really focus on that, especially when it comes about accessible um, accessible housing, um, transit wise. Same thing. Um, if they want to move to another province, again, it comes down to. Uh, they should be a person should be able to go to whatever province they need to move to. Uh, if it's for medical reasons, if they maybe they want to change of life, they want to live somewhere else. Uh, if it's a transportation wise, maybe their family live there, or maybe their cousins live there. They don't need to apply for disability again. They should be able to move there, right? So again, autonomy wise, I know it can be done. It should be interchangeable. We are Canadians with disabilities. We're citizens in Canada, not just in the province we live in. We're, we have our Canadian citizenship. We should be able to live wherever we want. Seniors can. Yeah. Seniors can live wherever they want. Yeah. Like, and I, and I think it's important. And again, like we probably should end the, the yeah. podcast soon, but I, I did want to just end off on when you, when you say autonomy, yes. uh, it, it is important to clarify the the bounds of that definition because yeah. as i always say you can bastardize definitions uh six ways from sunday oh yeah you yeah. know like you, you you can you can talk about autonomy you can talk about equity you can talk about equality i mean but you you can bastardize oh, any, yeah. of the, any of those yeah, you can pull it all apart yeah you can bastardize any of those right and it, i think it's important when when we use the word 
autonomy. We're using it in the most purest sense of what it actually means, not not mm -hmm. a not a perverted, uh, bastardized version of it. We're <laughs> we're like when I think of a, a definition, like I'm I'm thinking of a de definition in the purest sense, like going to a di dictionary. What does it What does a dictionary say of, like you know if. if Like again, I I don't want to like make this an, yeah. into another whole podcast, yeah. but but to to take um to take uh Stillwell's example, you know mm -hmm. uh, Michelle Stillwell, mm -hmm. her her example, her her definition of equity for for taking away the bus pass, mm -hmm. uh it, it was it was equity in the system. Well, the the proper definition of equity is. Is to restore something. It's not. It's not to take away something. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a restorative thing. When you, when you're talking about equity, you're talking about about a restorative justice. A justice. You're not talking about a a taking away or a minusing of something. Right. And and her definition of, of equity was taking away a bus pass. Now a that's handful, a handful. Just a small handful. Yeah. And and people. and that does not respect the restorative nature of what equity yeah. actually is. Right. Right. And that, that's what I mean about bastardizing things. And, and I mean, yeah. we could be, I, I mean, I'll and just that, end up. Yeah, yeah, I know kind of why when I mentioned uh, autonomy, it's it's uh, looking at the individual uh, person uh, and, 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 you know, when I say autonomy is letting them make that decision, what their needs are, what works good for them, not what the government feels it's good for them because their stakeholders say, well, Our stakeholders are basically saying uh, where they're hearing that, no, this is not working. Well, why don't you talk to the actual person? Like, I'm not worried yeah. about the stakeholders here. Like, let's remove the stakeholders out of the equation, people. Let's talk mm -hmm. to the person and their life, their lived experience. Like, when I say, when I go on a rant and I say, I just want transportation to get to and from a community. Am I asking for too much? And then I hear from a minister and... Um, Uh, minister uh yeah the transportation he's not running again rob mm -hmm. fleming uh, mm -hmm. uh honorable minister rob fleming mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that you're working on getting the transportation they're working at fixing up the victoria to duncan back and forth throughout the day like to get to a community be able to come, come back the same day they're, apparently they're working on it I just want to know where, like, what year they're working at getting to get that fixed. Like, <laughs> is it going to happen this year or within a yeah. few months or when? Like, um, like should, I, should I sing the song again? Yes. Welcome to the hotel, hotel California. California. You what can never one. leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I guess when I when I mentioned that, I'm doing a follow up because I want to know like when is that going to get fixed. Um, You know, because when I mention things that make sense, uh, when I saw that when I was in Toronto, being able to get to and from, I was like, wow, you can actually get to and from the community and not have to worry about not being able to get back. Um, I was just in awe, like the transit. It was the difference between nighttime, daytime, you know, from the transit wise, um, and especially Victoria. Like it's, you can't get anywhere else. You're like trapped. I mean, within, I can go as far as Sydney, um, out to Saanich. I, I can, if I wasn't coming back the next day, I could go up North Island, meaning Duncan and Cowichan. If you don't want to come back the same day, fine. But where are you going to stay for the night? Mm -hmm. You know, so you should be able to get, uh, you should be able to go in the morning and come back later in the day back to Victoria. It's, it should not be an issue, but you can't do that. Yeah. So it tells me the system's broken, right? Victoria blames Cowichan, Cowichan blames Victoria. So then back and forth, so nothing ever gets done, right? I mean, I could do that too. I could, you know, blame, well, um, the current premier from the former, former, former government back and forth. Well, 16 years, seven years, 16 years, seven years. But yeah. then, well, hello, nothing's getting done. Why don't we just work together? Same as transit, same as across the country. You know, BC blames the federal government, federal blames the BC or yeah. vice versa. You know, yeah. it's like, well, hello, like, Talk to each other. Let's fix things up. Yeah, Let's and, and, and EWD rates up. Same as we, CDB. Like, I mean, that's another yeah. football game. But yeah. um, hey, you know, I I hope everybody enjoyed today's segment. I know we we got off on a rant uh, on we talked about the trains and then uh, the transit and then we don't we don't do that, do we? We really? don't we don't do that. It keeps it entertaining <laughs> though. It it really covers a lot of other topics all built into one and. 
it kind of uh, gears up to, I guess, a uh, like little hints of who our guests are coming up um, to, because we talked about photography. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's one of our guests coming up. We yes. talked about, I uh, talked about um, children with disabilities just briefly. That's another yeah. guest coming up soon. Uh, uh, we, yeah. We, we talked about budgeting. There's, budgeting. there's, there's somebody coming up in uh, next month. That's, yep. Uh, we talk about budgeting. Talking about that. So there are little hints that, that we talk yeah. about, uh, you know, train travel, uh, uh, you know, and uh, of course, after we already had just done that, I mean, we're already looking at um, looking at other segments of uh, train travel uh, and people think, wow, I mean, you guys love traveling. Well, we do. We love be, uh, traveling on train because um, meeting people, talk about common interests, talk about our advocacy spreading the word around uh, about joy and happiness uh, and, and joy and happiness can be spread around by communicating with each other and building, bringing people's spirits up in a uncertain world of uh, uncertainty when it comes to economic uh, uh, turnaround. Um, when I mentioned about income supports, uh, people were shocked, Neil, just before we end the segment, well, in the segment about five minutes now. So people listening to it going, Oh my God, Brent, Please stop. How much longer are you going to keep I'm going? Gonna, I'm going to bring the cane out. Yeah. But, but when I when I talked to people about income supports, they were, they, they were shocked. They thought that the shelter portion was on top of the actual rate. I go, no, it's all built into one. All one. They're mm -hmm. like, then why is there a shelter portion? There should not be a shelter portion. If it's all on one, then it's all on one check, right? Pay how you want to pay your rent. But they were shocked that how government's they can just throw breadcrumbs. They just small little amounts, and they go a year, skip a year, but then, uh, but then say they, you know, well, hey, we raised the rates X amount of years. I go, because that's what they all love doing. They all, it's like they want to congratulate themselves, and they're like, so there should be enough where you know, if you want to, I don't know, enjoy life, um, you know, like maybe nothing extravagant, but you want to take a basic trip somewhere. Um, still have some money left over. You pay your rent, you pay your, your bills, you buy your food, buy your basic toiletries that you need in, in the household uh, rather than going to a food bank um, or whatever. Um, the they needs should be there for parents, for children. I said, yeah, like we were talking a whole group of us. And yeah, and like the children, the lady said she had to sacrifice certain things in order for her children to go on a train trip because she wanted she wanted them to enjoy life of uh, the experience of going on a train travel. And well, that, she, that's the whole thing about being a parent. Like I'm, yeah. I sacrifice all the time, Yeah, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, you know, uh, I even talked to, uh, to my son about money just a few days ago. And, and, and I, I said very bluntly, and maybe, maybe I shouldn't say stuff like this, but I, I did anyway. I said, you have to realize that for the last three Christmases in a row, you're basically the only one that got a, a good Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, like uh, this past Christmas, I got him a guitar because he basically needed one for, for school. So I, I bought him a oh, guitar. So cool. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, and then what did I get? At? Like the other Christmas before that, I got him like a, a new Switch you know, the Nintendo. And so, like I said, I, I'm, I'm buying those things for you because I'm, I'm scripting and saving. And, yeah. and, and I said, guess what? Everybody else, everybody else got one or two shirts. Yeah. Like, like I gave, uh, I gave my wife a couple shirts and she gave me a couple shirts and that was it. Yeah. And, and that's, but that's what, but what's, what it's been like for the last three Christmases. And that, I mean, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not complaining, yeah. but I, I was just putting in context for my son is like, like I'm doing as much as I can for you all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and I sacrifice myself all the time. Uh, yeah. And, and even when it comes to Christmases too, like, you know, that that's it, like one or two shirts and that, and that's it. And, you know, well, and that's what I, I found too is um, like talking to uh, people and, and also my lived experience is never being um, uh, hoping that, that, oh yeah, like I, I'm going to get this or, or that and never expect anything. Like I'm grateful for whatever I get. And, and that's how I, when I, was, I was brought up that way too is you just, it is what it is. You get mm -hmm. what you get. And if you don't, you don't. And I just appreciate 
everyone around me uh, and just, you know, having friends and family uh, around me and just, just enjoying uh, whatever the season is. Um, and uh, even like our train travel, it is what, what it was. Right. And we just went with it, um, talked to people and what they went through. And I was amazed. And I'm thinking, well, these people, you know, they must, you know, they're in basically accommodation stuff. And, you know, just the average person, they, they, they saved up for, for years in order to go and do that travel. And some people think, oh, wow, you must, must be rich to be able to take, uh, you know, like that, have that kind of accommodation. But some of the prices, yes, I must admit, the Arreo, like, you got to work on the prices a little bit better, though. I'm, I must, I must, you know, constructive criticism. Like on our way back, we did coach seating, uh, and one of the um, one of the attendants, uh, CSR, okay, um, he had reached out, and it was amazing. Like uh, we were going through um, Sioux Lookout in Ontario, and I think, well, where is Sioux Lookout? Anyway, he said, well, when we get communication, because they're radio communication, they need to radio their headquarters. They can radio each other on the train uh, with sort of their walkie talkies they use and like CB like, their stuff, right? Which is so cool because you can hear conversations like. Oh, interesting, <laughs> you know, but anyway, they had to radio their headquarters to find out for us about accommodation because they knew that, well, how far are you traveling? Oh, my God, you're going to go on coach seating. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, so they were trying to bend over backwards to try to find accommodation for us to see if they could make it work. Well, we, we found out uh, that uh, we do have some. Um, you have to wait till we get to uh, to Winnipeg. Oh, OK. And uh, we could we could make that happen, but you'd have to uh, do an upgrade. Oh, I see. And how much? Uh, that would be four thousand and twenty-six dollars. I like to say what? I did I win the lottery or something? <laughs> you know, no. And you know, like, but he he knew he was joking with them, but he said I I wouldn't even pay that. Like there was, I go well, who would? Some people he said will. Unfortunately, some people they doesn't mean nothing to them. Like money doesn't mean anything. He goes oh, okay. He goes so you think that's expensive? Try Prestige. We got one here for uh, thirteen thousand and fifty-four dollars say what because yeah some people will pay it just because um and it doesn't mean anything and those uh, and unfortunately there's concept of money money management right but it some people will do it they doesn't mean anything maybe they maybe they sold their home and they're retired and they made lots of money um mm -hmm. or they just maybe they saved up for many years and this is like uh maybe they saved up since they were a little kid and they saved up and now they're now they're in their late uh, late sixties or early seventies, and this is a one time shot deal they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I go yeah, talk about go out with the bang, right? I mean, with like on the. Tr <laughs> I don't mean this in a bad way, everybody. <laughs> but <laughs> when I say go with the bang, <laughs> with the bang. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no. But when I say that, I mean, like, go with the bang, like, on the train, like, having a bang of a time. It's like mm -hmm. having, like, a great time, um, enjoying life's journeys on the train. Because train travel, like, it doesn't matter if you can afford, like, some people may say, um, yeah, I'm going to have a, a Lamborghini versus I'm going to have um, just a regular um, Honda, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a difference between, like, types of vehicles, but you're still going to get from point A to point B. So when I say about accommodation wise, yeah, like you can still get everything that you need under a smaller amount, but if you want more space, yeah, go with a bigger um, accommodation. If you have this in your budget, uh, at the end of the day, um, the journey is um, excellent. Um, yeah. And it's, it's worth it. And so I, I hope I, when I mentioned that, that last comment, I didn't mean to any hurt anybody. I, go out with a bang but I, what i mean is like just in, enjoy like enjoy the journey go yeah. and uh, I mean, no it, we all know what you meant Brent. yeah but i mean if it takes time <laughs> to, to save up but it was it was hilarious <laughs> but i mean it takes time to save up for these things so like uh again thank you very much for the sponsor who who took care of our ticket we had to pay for our own food that was part of the thing so we were happy with that uh and i hope i got the most value for you um and again yeah like thank you uh, and i'm not going to say no again if you ever want to <laughs> so but or anybody else uh, that says hey he's great these guys had a great time um i want to make it more memorable um i do travel on amtrak sometimes but 
uh, yeah, I just don't know when that journey will be again. Um, we'll have to kind of uh, work toward that, but uh, it will be in the future. Just don't know when. Via mm -hmm. rail, yes, I look forward to being on board again uh, in the next journey sometime. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining in today. I hope that you enjoyed our extended long uh, yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, if the information is valuable to you. Please subscribe, um, share, promote the channel. Uh, if you want to uh, contribute, if you're in the financial means of contributing um, for the content that you're enjoying, um, reach out to Neil or myself through email, uh, you know, e-transfer, PayPal, whatever it may be. Um, yeah. We'll accept it. Um, and uh, yeah, like it, just pass on the information to your friends and family. Anyone can become disabled at any time, but at the same time, enjoy life. Uh, don't take life for granted uh, because things can change so rapidly. Um, yeah, like it's, it's uh, life's a journey. And on train travel, you never know it, where it will take you because mm -hmm. time stands still. When you're in train mode, I always say when you're in train mode, you're in that mode. You'll get there when you get there. Roads. We don't need roads. Roads, roads. yes. <laughs> we'll look back at this video, Neil, later on. They're going to say, what? They're talking about trains? They're talking about buses, cars? What? We, we what talked about a lot of stuff. They say, what are, what, what are these people talking yeah. about? We fly in the air now. We just I, make... have, I, have to, I have to watch back the episode to even <laughs> remember what we said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we they'll look so back. much. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're gonna look back and say, "What? No, we just snapped our fingers. We could be in this point at that time, any time." Wow, mm. they were really, really back to old age. Mm. Hey, people watching that, go, oh, you think that's old? Look back, way back in history, they had horse and horse and buggies. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. thanks everyone. Okay, Take thanks care. Everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.